We are continuing our series on powerful short prayers. Past couple of weeks, Pastor Dave has talked about the, the prayer of a lady who would not take no for an answer. Even when that no came from Jesus himself. You know, we may say prayers and we don't feel like we're getting an answer and, and, and you know, Jesus is not visible in the flesh to us, but this lady was side by side saying, basically, I'm not taking no for an answer. And, and if you recall, he even called her a dog. But she responded, said, even a dog should be eating the scraps that fall from the master's table. And he granted her request. Last week, we talked about King Jehoshaphat, who was disobedient and cried out to God anyway. Did God hear his prayer? Absolutely he did, because God is merciful to hear our prayers. There is grace and there is mercy in a loving God. But on the other hand, there's also consequences for our disobedience, as we saw with Jehoshaphat. Today, we're going to talk about a powerful short prayer spoken by someone who was told that he was a pain from the very beginning of his life, from the moment he was born. He was a pain. Actually, this specific prayer has become a well-known prayer to many of us, and it is called the Prayer of Jabez. So if you can, I would like to read a passage from 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, and it says, Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. God answered his prayer. For starters, just to give you an idea of the importance of this prayer, if you read 1 Chronicles starting with chapter 1, all you get to read about is genealogies and names and names and names that you can't even pronounce. And then every now and then there's like a Dan and a Joseph, and then there's all these weird names and names and names. And then you get to chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, and we read this prayer of Jabez. And then you go another three or four chapters of all these names and names and a couple of things that did some important things in battle and some things for Israel, for the nation of Israel. But right in the middle of all these names, pages of names, it says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. It just stops and says that. And his mother called his name Jabez because she bore him in pain. The literal meaning of Jabez means he will cause pain. That's his name. For some reason, his mother gave him a word, that, a name that represents the word pain. And apparently did not want him to forget about it. I don't know exactly what his circumstance was, but it sounds like he wasn't the easiest baby to deliver. Or it's quite possible he was born with a disability. Whatever the case may be, his entire life he gets to hear how much pain he caused his mother in childbirth. And maybe the first few times it was funny, and maybe it didn't seem like such a big deal, but imagine every time there's a family get-together or your parents have some new friends over, all they do is talk about what a pain you were at childbirth. Here comes Jabez. Boy, let me tell you about the time whew, when, when I gave birth to this kid. Now, you may be thinking, well, what's the big deal? There's no, big, there's no harm in that. Or you may be thinking, yes, I can relate. Because I'll tell you what the big deal is, if that's what you're thinking. The more a person hears how much of a pain they are, the more they begin to believe it. 
Think about Jabez as a kid. And whenever something didn't go right or he messed up, how easy it would be for him to say to himself, well, mom's right, I'm a pain. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I'm no good. I'm a pain. Because mom, that's all mom talks about. And that's my name. People will stay at the level of what they believe others' expectations are of them. And this is something that I, I, I stake my life on this saying because I firmly believe this. If people are encouraged in life and they hear positive feedback and compliments, they are more likely to strive to be better, to want to do better, to rise to that occasion. If they are encouraged, if they are complimented, if they are told what a good job they've done. But if all a person hears about themselves is negative comments, then what's the point in striving to do better when all you hear about is how low in life you are? Why can't you get anything right? I always ask you to do this, and you can never get it right, so I always have to go to your brother or your sisters or the other co-worker. See my point? And just so you know, these aren't just um, nice little sayings from Chip. There is a proverb that will back this up in chapter 16, verse 24, that says, Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. So, what kind of words come out of your mouth? If pleasant words are health to the bones, then what are unpleasant words? Unhealthy. Hurtful. Damaging. So there's Jabez. Every time he introduces himself, he gets to say, Hi, hello, how are you doing? My name's Jabez. I'm the guy you heard about, the big pain. That's me. But... Here's the lesson to be learned. Jabez did not give in to that. The Bible says that he was more honorable than all his brothers. If you read, start in Chronicles chapter 1, and just, I'm, I'm going to tell you, unless you've just had a couple of cup of coffees, a couple cups of coffee, you're going to have a hard time getting all the way to chapter 4 because it's just Solomon's son was Rehoboam. Abijah was his son. Asa was his son. Jehoshaphat was his son. Joram was his son. Azahiah was his son. Josiah was his son. And that's just a few names. And then you get, now Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. Right in the middle of all this, God says, I'm going to tell you about a guy named Jabez. And his prayer starts out by asking, God to bless him. God says, here's a guy who is more honorable than all of his brothers. And he prayed this prayer, that you would bless me. He wanted God's best, and he believed God would give it to him. Do you know that the very reason for existence is to be a blessing to God and a blessing to those around us? That is what we as believers are here on this earth to do. Our lives should be a blessing to God. And because of that, it will flow through us and we will be a blessing to those around us. When we walk with God according to his ways, we bless him. Parents, just like your children bless you when they do something good, when they make you laugh for no reason, when you get to see them progress in life, it's a blessing. It's the same with our Father in Heaven when He gets to see us progress as Christians. Because this in turn causes us to be a blessing to others. We were not created to live life for ourselves. We were created to have a relationship with God. And one of the benefits of this relationship is to be a blessing to others. When people know that you are a Christian, and you leave the room, what do you want them to say of you? Uh, he's one of those Christians. You don't want to just don't even get involved in the conversations with him. Or that person's a Christian, and let me tell you something, they walk it out. Because as Christians, it's either one or the other. It really is to a non-believer. 
There's a passage in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, that says, Let each of you look out not only for your own interest, but also for the interest of others. In other words, take care of yourself, but also take care of those around you. Be the blessing. There's nothing wrong with asking God to bless you, especially if you plan on using it to bless others. And I think that's what the intent of Jabez's prayer was. He knew what it felt like to be looked down upon. And he wanted to make sure he could be a blessing to others. I can guarantee you, Jabez knew within a few minutes of meeting somebody, he knew how they were treated in life. And he knew whether he needed to be a blessing to somebody or if he could just be their friend. He knew, probably knew the right words to say to somebody who had an upbringing similar to his. Jabez didn't say, God bless me. He said, God bless me indeed. Indeed means, God bless me a lot. I want all that you have. Give it all to me, God. I'll take it, and I'll use it. I think Jabez had a heart that thrived on seeing others blessed. And he knew God would be the driving force behind those blessings. So he asked, and he asked with confidence. The next part of his prayer is for God to enlarge his territory. So Jabez is an Israelite. And most Israelites were shepherds. So Jabez is basically praying for more land, more responsibility, more opportunity, which would mean more influence. Could it be that Jabez looked around him and thought, surely I was born for more than this. There has got to be more to life than what I've been dealing with or what I've been encountering. Jabez was not content with what he had, and he wanted to be used by God in all areas of his life. And when I say Jabez was not content, I do not believe that Jabez was a complainer. But I believe that Jabez knew that there was more to life, and that if he asked God for it, God would give it to him because he planned on using it to further God's kingdom. He planned on using it for God's glory. And in order for this to happen, he needed to prosper so that those around him could prosper as well. So is this right? Is it okay for, to pray a prayer like this? To say, God, bless me. Give me all that you've got. I want more. I think it is. I absolutely think it is. And I'll tell you why. Because Jabez's heart was right with God. That's why. His heart was right with God. He wasn't praying a selfish prayer for himself. He wanted to be an influence. He was praying a prayer so that God's blessings could be poured down into him so that he could pour it out to those around him. And just from the fact that it says at the end, God granted him all that he had requested. That alone tells me that that's an okay prayer, but just let's just just for the sake of argument for a second. What if, let's look at a couple different perspectives here. Care group leaders. Mark, you listening? Care group leaders. Do you ever pray for God to enlarge your care group? Do you ever say, "God, Bring me some more people. Do you ever say, God, I'm going to do my best to get some more people to come to the care group. So I'm going to reach out to others. I want my care group to grow, God. Anybody, does any care group leaders ever pray that prayer? Or do you think that's kind of, you know, they're not. First of all, if Mark finds out we've been praying that prayer. Whew, care group would grow. I hope you do pray that prayer. Because I hope you're praying that prayer so that your care group can grow and that you can be a blessing in other people's lives. That's why you want to pray that prayer. 
Not so that when Mark does his numbers, you can say, yep, I got the biggest group. Because I think I got do I have the biggest group. <laughs> trying, man, I'm trying. <laughs> he even knows when I type in different fake names. <laughs> but I hope that you do. Pray that prayer to be a blessing to others. How about this? Business owners. Do you ever pray a prayer for God to give you more business? Do you ever pray that prayer? God, bring more business my way. I hope that you do. Because as a Christian, guess what comes along with that? Responsibility. Influence. Being able to change the lives of others. Because if you pray a prayer like that, and you want to be used by God, He's going to use you. Do we pray prayers like this so that God can bless us? Yes. But it has to go deeper than that. We pray these kinds of prayers not only so that God can bless us, but so that we can be a blessing to others in the process. Amen? So I want to read a passage here in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. And this is a guy named Paul who wrote this book to the Philippians. And so he says, chapter 3, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid a hold of me. I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That was Paul's heart. And just to give you a little insight about Paul, if you don't know who he is, he had a name before Paul and it was Saul. And in the book of Acts, you can read about him because he was committed to persecuting Christians. He was a Jewish religious leader and his sole purpose was to persecute Christians and wipe Christianity out. But God got a hold of him, changed his life, and then he wrote most of the New Testament. So here's the thing. This is what Paul is telling us. The moment we think we have attained all that God has for us is the moment that we are going to see a decline in our spiritual health. Paul knew there would always be more with Jesus. Jabez knew there should be more to life than what he was experiencing. Don't stay focused on past accomplishments or hurts or mistakes. Paul knew that like an athlete training for the next event, he needed to stay focused on that which lies ahead. The things that have happened in our past are in the past. That's what Paul's trying to tell us here. Don't let that drag you down. Don't let it keep you where you're at. Focus on Jesus and move ahead in life. Whatever it is that we are doing, if we are willing and keeping our eye on the prize, that is Jesus. If we're reading our Bibles, if we're doing the best we can in His name, staying focused on Him, then there is nothing that cannot be accomplished in His name. Nothing. Amen? One thing I would caution, though, is that when asking for God to enlarge your territory, when looking for more business, a bigger sphere of influence, to be a blessing to others, to have more than what you believe God has in store for you, it's always wise to seek guidance and wisdom and even confirmation from somebody that you respect spiritually. Find out if you're on the right track, if you should be heading down in this direction. 
Maybe if you should kind of hone things in a little bit or, you know, close some doors, open some doors, that sort of thing. Because not only is Jabez requesting specifics from God, he also shows some wisdom in his requests when he says that your hand would be with me. He's saying, God, bless me. Bless me indeed. Give me all that you've got. Enlarge your, my in territory. Give me more. Help me to be a bigger influence. And keep your hand on me in the process. Stay with me, God. Don't leave me. I won't leave you. How many of us have tried to do something on our own without asking God for guidance, and it didn't go as planned? I'll, I'll just raise my own hand. And then we can all just kind of think about, yep, I remember that time. We don't know exactly why Jabez prayed this prayer. It's possible he was getting ready for a new chapter in life. It's possible he was getting ready for some kind of service, maybe even a job. Maybe even he sensed some ministry opportunity. One thing we do know is that he executed wisdom in seeking guidance by asking God's hand. To be with him. Jabez knew that he couldn't go at this alone, and he was determined to do something with his life that could only come through God's help. God, this is what he was saying, God, with your hand upon me, I know we can successfully walk this out together. There isn't going to be any failures here because I know your hand is going to be upon me. I'm going to do my best and know that you're going to carry me through this. Jabez also knew to ask God to keep him from evil. Jabez was not so naive as to think that he could never be tempted with sin. So again, this part of the prayer tells me that he knew this was some serious business. He wasn't just saying, you know, God bless me, give me a little bit more, could you please? Throw me a bone. How many prayers like that have we said? And then we didn't, get, we didn't get anything from it. Jesus, when teaching the disciples how to pray, the most famous prayer of all, the Lord's Prayer, what is one of the lines in there? Deliver us from evil. Above all, Jabez desired to live a holy life, to be a blessing to God with all that he had been given. The last thing Jabez requested is, this is the kind of, this is the, this is the, the part that we get to kind of see, open up and just see a, a little bit to where he is at emotionally and with life. What's the last thing he said? That I may not cause pain. God, give me all that you got. I'll take it, I'll use it. Enlarge my territory. Help me to be a bigger influence to those around me. Keep me from evil. Your hand would be upon me. Keep me from evil. And God, I don't want to be a pain. I don't want to be a pain anymore. This poor guy is probably so weary in thinking that he's a pain. Why is that? Because it's been drilled in him from the day he was born. You're a pain. You're a pain. Your name means I'm a pain. Not only did he cause his mother a great deal of pain at birth, but think about this. What if he's disabled? And that's all he hears about himself. What if this is a cry to God not to cause pain to anybody else because his entire life people have been taking care of him, carrying from one place to another, just taking care of him because he can't take care of himself or he's disabled and can only do so much. That's, that's the last word in his prayer. I don't want to be a pain anymore, God. But I know there's something more to life than this. Or, this could be another aspect of it. Or, could it be that Jabez knew the pain sin causes, not only to those around us, but the hurt it causes God when we call ourselves believers? How about that? Not only do sinful actions hurt God, they hurt us, they hurt our testimony, they hurt our witness, 
may hurt those around us, our family members, our friends, our coworkers, our bosses, our whatever. Sinful actions have a ripple effect to everyone around us. So, Jabez asked to be kept from evil as not to cause pain. For whatever reason, Jabez asked not to be a pain. Maybe he's just crying out, God, I would really like to just not be a pain to anybody anymore. Or, God, keep me from evil so that I may not cause pain. I don't, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt those around me. I want to live a holy life. I desire all that you have for me, God, and I'm going to do my best to see that we can walk this out together and I can make you proud of what you've given me. God granted his entire prayer. Last line. So God granted him what he requested. It's just a small prayer. Short, powerful prayer. Do you ever notice how some people seem to be born with everything for them? They got it all. They have a great family. They have great friends. They got all the talents in the world. They don't practice on anything. They pick up every instrument. They know how to play it all. They can do everything. And then there are those who seem to be born with everything going against them. They don't have the best home life, broken family, terrible upbringing, no friends, can never seem to catch a break in life. Well, why is it that those who have all the natural gifts and talents in life waste them, and most often don't amount to anything. They take those gifts and those talents that they've been given by God, and they take them for granted. All the while, others have to work hard for what they have and where they've gotten in life. They have overcome every obstacle that was set before them. And I believe Jabez was an overcomer. He had an obstacle set before him, and he didn't, keep, he didn't let them keep him down. Jabez was a man who definitely got a bad start in life. But he did not let that deter him. He was determined to succeed and be the blessing to those around, them, around him. He did not let what others said determine his destiny. Amen? He knew that in order to succeed in life, he needed God's help. Because nothing is impossible with God. Jabez knew this. Jabez was not satisfied with what he had and was bold enough to request what he wanted from God. This story of Jabez is a reminder to us that it's not just what a person does in life that matters but also what they have to overcome to get to where they're at. We all have obstacles and things that we have to overcome in order to succeed in life. Every single one of us do. Jabez can be our example of pressing in to God's presence in order to receive all that he has for us. In the middle of all these names, can't even pronounce half of them, there are two verses that record a powerful, short prayer that brought about change and success in one man's life. It's a passage in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, that tells us, Let our requests be made known to God. There's a life verse that Kim and I have, and care group probably hears me say this at least once a month, but it's in Psalm 138, verse 8, and it says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. We pray that prayer, we quote that verse all the time in our house, because you know what? If it concerns you, who else does it concern? Jesus. Philippians says, let our request be made known to God. If you have something that is concerning you, let your request be made known to God because he wants to bring that concern to perfection. That's what this prayer is all about. Something that Jabez saw, I believe, on the horizon was 
concerning to him. He knew that God could bring it to perfection, answer his prayer, and the two of them would walk this out and succeed in life. Jabez is the perfect example that the choices we make are more important than the potential we have. Many people can relate to Jabez. He was an ordinary person who went far beyond what probably anybody around him ever expected him to do. To do. My guess is, the reason that is, is because Jabez knew that with God, all things are possible. Amen? All right, let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for people like Jabez. I thank you for people who, in the Bible, God, and even maybe people in our own lives, even maybe some of us, who have been given bad start from the beginning. Man, you got to learn from Jabez. Don't let that keep you down. Jabez did not let the things that were said to him keep him in that position. He rose above it. He said, he's going to bless me. I'm going to be the blessing to others. The only way this is going to happen is if I call on God. So my prayer today that if you do have requests, if you do have things on the horizon that you see, job opportunity, relationship-wise, whatever the case may be, my prayer is that today is the day that you begin to reap the blessings of those prayers. You begin to see God move in your life. That we can use the prayer of Jabez as an example. Because if our hearts are right with God, He wants to see us succeed more than anything because we will give him the glory for that because he deserves the glory. God, I thank you so much for that. And as we enter into a time of worship, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would just fill this church today. Prayers would be answered. Requests would be made known. And those things that concern us would be brought to perfection pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, we will uh, have our ushers come up. We'll take our offering. And um, if we could have our prayer team come up front and off to the sides here. And just a couple of things I want to, I think God wants to answer some prayers for. And those who can relate to Jabez given a bad start or maybe you were given a good start but somewhere along the line things just didn't go as planned and now you beat yourself up you 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 are at the expectation that you believe you are at the level of expectation you believe others believe of you and I'm going to tell you what God wants so much more for you so if that's you and you can relate to that please come up and get some prayer God wants to change your life today He wants to teach you today how to pray a prayer as confidently as Jabez did. Amen? And then also, if there are things on the horizon for you, business opportunities, ministry opportunities you see, something you see in your life that you would like an answer for, a blessing, enlargement of your territory, whatever the case may be, or confirmation, some wisdom, Come on up and get some prayer. I believe that today God really wants to answer some prayers today, give you some direction and some guidance, and also bring you to the level of expectation that God sees the potential in you. Amen? So we're going to close with one more song. If any of that speaks to you or any other prayer needs that you have, please come up to the sides and get some prayer.
blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name every blessing you pour out how turn back to praise when the darkness closes in lord still i will say blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your glorious name Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, where there's pain in the offering. Blessed be blessing you pour out, out, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be Jabez prayed, Lord, that you would just increase our borders, increase our territory for your name's sake, that we would be a bigger influence on others. Well, God bless you. That concludes our service. Have a great week, and we hope to see you back here next week.